I'm making a specialized tool to measure the thickness of the plywood for the upcoming project that I'm going to be making in the next video. Hey everyone, welcome back to Puff Out Workshop. In the previous video, I actually made this box using the VCAR Pro and it used these box joints to be able to cut it out. Now in that software, virtually every calculation was done for you. You didn't have to really do anything as far as measuring the slots and the tabs to be able to get everything to fit perfectly. But in the next project, I want to be able to make my charging station and I want to use a similar joint. It is a mortise and tenon, or some people call it a slot and a tab. Now to be able to do that, you really need to know the thickness of the material. Now I'm planning on using this half inch uh, material to be able to cut this out. But is it truly a half inch? Well, to be able to determine exactly what you need, since you don't have a computer that can calculate all the different things, you need a tool like this. Now what this does, it gives me the slots right here at the different measurements. This one's 13 millimeters thick and it's 50 millimeters across. Now in the project that I'm going to do with the charging station, I'm going to bake the slots 50 millimeters wide. So that will be consistent. But the thickness of these is what makes the difference. So to be able to use a tool such as this, you need to be able to put in the material that you're going to use. And you can see that this is very loose. So then you come down to the next one. Again, it's very loose. And well, it's getting close. That has, that's 12.4. And 12.2 actually fits real good. And 12.0 is too tight. So I'm going to use 12.2 in the computer when I'm drawing out this project for the charging station. Because this is the thickness of the material I'm going to be using. So that's how you use a gauge such as this. And it's very, very valuable. Now, for those of you who use the lasers, you're familiar with doing a test grid, something like this, to be able to get the feed rates and the power setting to be able to do your project. Well, using this tool is basically the same thing. You need to be able to know exactly how thick that plywood is to be able to make those slots so that they fit correctly. So it's the same concept, it's just a different application. Now, this one is made up for the half inch plywood if I need to make one for the quarter inch, or if I go to three quarter inch plywood, I'll make one of these also. But for now, this is what I need in the shop to be able to do the next project. But in the meantime, let me show you exactly how I made this so that you can make one in your shop. So this is the file that I used to be able to cut this project out. And I started out with a single sided project and I made this 106 millimeters wide on the x-axis and it's 300 millimeters on the y-axis. Now I set the material thickness at 12.5 and I'm using the millimeters. And as we saw just a moment ago, the thickness of the material really came out to be closer to 12.2. Now I'm using the material bed to be able to cut this and I'm using the bottom left-hand corner to be able to use this as a reference. So this is a basic layout of what I have. So I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to switch over for just a moment and show you the tool paths. The tool paths for the letters, I just used a 90 degree V-bit to be able to carve these. And this is one of the things that I wish that V-carve would actually do to be able to let you zero off of the surface to be able to do the letters and then be able to use the machine bed to be able to cut out the slots. But unfortunately, they don't do that. Hopefully that will be something they'll do in the future. But if I turn off the letters, you can see all the slots are being cut out. And that will cut all the way through the material and not cut into the bed of the machine itself. So I'm going to turn off the tool pass. Now we're back over in the design phase and I'm going to start with a brand new uh, job and show you exactly how I set this up. Let's come up here to file and I'm going to create a brand new one 
and file has changed. I don't need to do anything with this. I'm going to say no to this. And so now I have a brand new work area. And let's take a look at it. This is a single sided. We said we needed this to be 106 millimeters by the 300 millimeters tall on the Y axis. We'll leave the thickness. I'm going to go ahead and put the thickness since we just measured it at 12.2. We're going to measure off of the machine bed and we'll keep the bottom left hand corner. With all of that, we'll click OK. Now the first thing I want to do is set up a box. Now for this box, I want to be able to set this, the starting point at 12 millimeters on the X axis. I'm going to do the same thing on the Y axis. I want that at 12 millimeters. As far as the width, I want to set this up for 50 millimeters on the X axis. And I'm going to start off with 13.0 millimeters. And I'm going to create that box. And you notice it created that box where it's equally spaced 12 millimeters here and 12 millimeters on the Y axis. Okay, so we have the first box. I'm going to go ahead and close this down. And I want to use the array tool and put 10 of these in here. So we'll come over to the array tool and let's take a look at this. We're going to use this object right here as my reference. And I want to be able to have 10. Now this is going to be on the Y axis. We only want the one column. And as far as the gap, on the Y axis, I want to be able to have that same 12 millimeter. Now this is something you can change. If you want more than 10, keeping the board the same size, you can do that. But for my purposes, I kept this at 12 millimeters between each one of them. So now I'll just hit copy. And you can see all of those drop right in exactly where they need to be. Now the next thing I want to do is put a circle in here. I want to use 12 millimeter for the diameter of this and I'll just hit create. Now there's my circle. We'll close this out. Now where do I actually want this positioned? Well I want to be able to have it of course in the center left to right and I also want to have it well, about 12 millimeters down. So what I need to be able to do, since this is 12 millimeters, the center of that would be six millimeters. And I want to be able to have this 12 millimeters from here. So roughly 18 millimeters down. So let's just grab a guideline and we can put this down into this area. But where does it need to be exactly? So right click on that. We'll set this at 282 and we'll hit close. Now we'll highlight the circle and I can move it right up and you'll watch it snap into the center. And it snaps. So right there is exactly where it needs to be. We'll right click on the guideline and delete it. And that's taken care of. Now I want to be able to put the text in here the same way. And to be able to do that, I want to come down here and put a box in. And I want to be able to put this box right into this area right here. So what's the size of this box? We'll make this box 22 millimeters on the X axis and the Y axis has it at 13 millimeters. That's good. All right, so we'll close that out now. Now, where is that in position to? If I put a guideline right there, we'll highlight that, and that's 60, we'll just call it 62 millimeters. If I move this over another 12 millimeters, that would be 74 millimeters. So I'm gonna just type in 74 millimeters, and there's my new line. And that's actually lined up perfectly. So that worked out really, really well. And I can just take this one and we're going to use the array tool. We're going to use this. All the settings will be the same. 
we'll just hit copy and now everything has been keyed into it. Now we have to go back in manually and change each one of these, 12.8. And then this one will be 12.6, 12.4, and you see I don't have to do anything else other than just click on it and type in the new number. We have this box highlighted, we'll type in 50 millimeters slot and you can put really anything that you want into this box I will close that and now we'll just delete that box you don't need it anymore and the same thing for these other boxes don't need them so I can just select one now what I can do is come in here I have all of them selected and I can just right click and cut it and all the boxes are gone. So that is set. Off camera, I'm changing all of these uh, boxes down to the correct size from 13 millimeter down to the 11 two. I could have put all this on one layer and then the text on another layer, but I did. This is a simple enough project just to leave everything as it is. The last step that we need is we need to be able to put the little dog bones in here. Because again, the dog bones are not automatic. So we're gonna come down to the fillet tool path and we want just a regular dog bones. And now I can come over here and just click on this and drop these in. And you can see how it changes when it clicked you see that little check mark, then I can put it in. Roll it over close, you see the check mark, and there it is. So I'm gonna go through and do all the dog bones on all of these. Okay, I'm back, all of them are done, so we'll close this, and now let's move over and create some tool paths. First thing I'm going to do it do the tool paths for all of the slots, including the circle. So I'll hold down the shift and catch that. Again, it'd be easier if it was on a separate layer, but that's a whole nother topic. Come over here. Start depth, of course, is gonna be on the surface, but we need to cut down 12.2. That's the actual thickness of the material. We're using an eighth inch end mill to be able to cut this out. And it says 16 passes, way too many. We'll come down, we're gonna change this to three passes. That works real well. We'll click OK. I wanna be able to cut this on the inside to be able to get a true accurate size. I really don't need anything else here. You can change the name to whatever name that you want and then hit calculate. And I can reset this, preview the tool paths, and you can see how that will cut all the way through. So we'll reset this. Now I want to be able to deselect all of those, and I want to come up and select all of the text. We'll close this out. This time I want to use the V bit. And this is where I wish I could start from the surface but we still have to start at the zero. I do not want to do a flat depth. I want to use the 90 degree V bit and there's really nothing else that I need to worry about here. Again, put whatever name that you want, hit calculate and there it is. So I'll reset this, calculate it and you can see how that looks. I'm going to reset everything and now we have everything done and that would be your finished project. So at this point, the only thing that's left is to come over here and save the tool paths. And you'd have to save the tool paths individually since you're using two different bits. So when I select on the V-carve, 
you can see the VBIT 90 degree pops in. I would save that. Then I would come back, select the profile, and you'll see this shows the end mill, eighth inch, and I would save that and then close it. Now I save everything on a uh, thumb drive and I have a file set up as a slot and tab tool. And this is how I named it, slot 50 millimeter cutout with the eighth inch end mill. And then this would be my 90 degree V bit to be able to cut out the letters. And this is the file itself. So if I ever need to go back and change anything, I have the original file that I can change. In addition to that, if I choose later on to make a tool such as this with the three quarter inch or quarter inch, just by naming this with a different name, keeping everything on the same file, all of them will be located and easy to find. I have the Open Builds controller opened up and it's all set up. I've loaded in the file. This is the file that's going to cut. It's going to cut out all of those slots. All that's left to do now, since I have already zed the machine, is to be able to hit the run job. Now this portion cut absolutely fantastic. It cut all the slots and that circle out and the depth was perfect. Went right down to the wasteboard without cutting into the wasteboard at all. I want to bring up the second file now. So I open up the G code and I'm going to look right here. This is my 90 degree for the letters. I'll select that and hit open. And now you can see where all the letters are going to be cut out. So let me turn the router on and I'll hit run job. Of course, off camera, I did change the bit and re the machine. And this time, cutting out the text, it really cut too shallow. I had to go back and change that and change the depth. And this is why I wish I had the option to be able to do the Z on top of the surface for the V carve. But you can see where I'm running this the second time. It's cutting down just a little bit deeper and creating the perfect text that I wanted. But this did take, like I said, running it twice to be able to get the correct depth so that it looked correct. I put the blue tape down just as kind of an experiment to see if it would eliminate some of the tear out. Not really sure if it did or not, but I had very little sanding, so I'm going to assume that it did help. This glue and tape method really holds extremely well, and I don't think I've ever had a failure. Now, as far as these slots, it cut all the way through right down to the wasteboard and did not damage that wasteboard at all. As far as the numbers, the V-carve did great to be able to carve them. Now, I did run this that second time to get it just a little bit deeper. As I said earlier, I really wish the Vetric people would set up the program so that you could choose to use the machine bed if you're cutting all the way through the material and then in the same project be able to choose the material surface to be able to use the V-car to cut out these letters. That would really be a wonderful thing if they could add. But all in all, I'm very happy with the way this looks. Well, there you go. This is a very simple tool to be able to make and also it's a very valuable tool to have in the shop because if you're going to use the slots and the tabs or if you want to call them the mortise and tenons, you can do that as well because it's key to be able to know exactly how thick that plywood is and we had tested this out and found that the 12.2 worked out real well. So in the next video, when I set up the charging station, I'm going to be using these types of joints and this tool will be very handy because now I know exactly how thick this plywood actually is. So I hope you enjoyed this video today and if you did give me a thumbs up, subscribe right down there below and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. So bye bye everyone, see you real soon.